now, as you can see probably, in Coronation Crescent in Epworth. And one of the residents of Coronation Crescent is Mr. Eric Maxfield. And I've put him with me now. Welcome, Eric. Thank you. Nice. Now, Coronation Crescent, obviously built. Um, 1953 when I moved in, yeah. Uh, that was the first one in down here. You were the first one in? Yes. I yeah. see. And it obviously was built. 53. 53, 53 yeah. yeah. So after the coronation or just during it or what? Pardon? I mean the coronation was in 53. Were you sort of underway when the coronation went on or? Yes, well the coronation I think was in the spring and we moved in, I moved in in September. Right, and, and um, it, it, did you buy the house or were they? No, we bought it later. It was council house then. All these were council houses. They're nearly all bought now. But and what sort of, when you bought it, what sort of price was it in those days? Oh, when I bought it, it was uh, four and a half thousand. Not bad, is it? No, 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 no. A long time ago, and I could have bought it a lot cheaper than that at one time. Yes, but this, yeah. uh, they allowed council houses to be bought. Didn't yes, they? they did. Yeah. Yes. Was that Margaret Thatcher's era? Yes, it yeah. was. Mm. Yeah. So going back to the coronation, what do you recall of the coronation when you were, when it was happening? Not a lot, really. I was at work most of the time, really. Yeah. And then, yes. Yes. Yeah. Did you watch it on television or did you see it at all? I watched it on TV, yes. What yeah. sort of TV was it? Well, probably a nine inch bush. <laughs> nine inch bush? <laughs> Black and white. Black and white. Black and white, yeah. Because I, I remember uh, we had one and it had a magnifying glass. Oh, on. yeah, you could get one and you used to strap it around the front. Yes. And it was full of oil. That's or right. Paraffin and they used to magnify it, yes. Make the picture bigger. Yes, that's all right. And what was the atmosphere like in Epworth in those days? It was all right, it was good. What, why, what good? What do you mean by good? Well, everybody, I knew everyone down the street. You knew everyone in Epworth when you walked up and down the street. Yes. Which you don't do now. No. I mean, a lot of people down here, I don't even know their names. And you were the first resident? One of the first, yeah, yeah September. Yeah, yeah. So, so you've seen a lot of changes then since 53 to now? You yeah, see, yeah, yeah, yeah. Regarding the yeah. social side yeah. of things? No cars down here then. No. Um, everyone, well, a lot of people worked in Epworth then because there was a lot of industry in Epworth then, farming and shops and one thing or another. I think there was about 70 odd shops in Epworth at that time. Was there? Yeah. Now, you were born in, in the middle of Epworth. Yes. Yeah. Where was that? Waterloo House. Waterloo House? Yeah, in the marketplace. And, and that's somewhere near Hollingsworth Lane? Yes, it is. You just go up Hollingsworth Lane, yes, yeah, the first one up on your right hand side. Mm. And the people that were, were they more forthcoming? Did you, you, sort of, you got, got the impression that you knew everybody oh, and everybody said hello? Yeah. When and now it's not the same? No. no so, no. A big difference. Yes, it is. I think you say them all over anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, you say you worked, I think you worked at, we're going to talk about the cinema, well, we, shortly, yeah. aren't we? Yeah. And um, you used to sort of walk up there and make your way up and... Oh yeah, I used to go up and go up on my bike, yeah. On bike. I, I mean, I lived in a marketplace then, and uh, what would it be, in 1942 when I started there. But when I was younger, I had a magic lantern, then I had a 9.5 millimeter uh, projector. Mm. Well, I'll tell you what we do, we'll, uh, we're here where you live now. Well, I think what we'll do, Eric, we'll live up to uh, Queen Street yeah. and, and get in that area and you can tell yeah. us a little bit more about the cinema. Yeah, yeah? what I know. <laughs> what you know, okay. Okay, that's great. Oh, yeah. We're down from where you live at Coronation Crescent and here we are now at the site of the Rio Cinema. That's right, yes. Now, it's not very often that a town of, say, what, 3,000 people then probably had a big cinema like the one you worked in as a projectionist? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there'd be only about 2,000 that time. Would it? Yes. 2,000 people. I mean, yeah. it warranted a big picture house. Oh, yes, it was a good Why? picture house. Well, people from round about used to come from Belton, Butterwick, Perry, Westwood Side, Hatsey, even Misterton. Did, did, was there transport provided ever? Or? Yes, there used to be buses running then, of course. Especially yes. for the cinema? Yes, yes, and service buses as well. So, so okay, they're not a typical night. What was it like? Was it full? Or was it, you know, was it... They're full at weekends, but of course, during the war it was full every night. During the war? Yes, every night it was full. It used to be queued right down to the marketplace. Down this one? Yes, yes. There used to be two houses on a Saturday night. Half past six and half past eight. Uh huh. Yeah. 
And you've, I take it you use all the big films that are in oh, Rome? Yes, yes, time? yeah. Three changes a week. Mm-hmm. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then Saturday. Yeah. What year did you start working here? About nine, I was, when I was 14, it would be been 1942 or 3. 42. Now then, what about some of the managers? What were they like? Sydney York was the one of the yeah. What was he like? He was all right, he was very good. And good boss? Yes, and Barney Dawson, they were in partnership together. Mm-hmm. Then eventually uh, Mr York bought Mr Dawson out and then Mr York ran it. And then he sold it, or I should say in the 70s, to a gentleman from Sheffield. Oh, what was he like? Well, I never actually met him because I'd finished then. Yeah. Finished then. Yeah. So, Dor- Barney Dawson and, and Sydney York, wasn't it? Yeah. And uh, we got a few pictures uh, of the cinema, which uh, we can look at now. And let's let's, let's talk about um, te- uh, particularly. Uh, well, there was a big fire, wasn't there? That was re- really. Well, let's let's just go before the fire. Yeah. Now, somebody told me a friend of yours, Reg Osborne, I oh, recall, yeah. said that whenever he went in there. There was a lovely smell. Well, you used to spray it. You oh. used to spray it every night before a performance. With what? So you bought commercial uh, spray for cinemas and on a pressurised, you used to pump it up and just go around and spray everywhere. And, it yeah. was good, wasn't it? Oh, well, yes, but of course you used to smell of smoke then. Oh, yeah. It was full of smoke. <laughs> Everyone smoked. That's true, of course everybody yeah. smoked, yeah. yeah. Was there any, co- did you think that anybody, like the, the court, the old courting couple? Well, of course, you all did, you all did. I mean, that's why I met my wife at the cinema. Yeah. Well, this cinema? Yes, at this cinema, yeah. Is that yeah. right? It is right. Did yeah. you get in the back row? No. Oh. No, because we both worked here. <laughs> what did your wife do? She was a director at the time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And what was her name? Barbara, well, Barbara Johnson was her name Barbara then. Barbara Johnson. Yeah. Oh, you met her here and you met her, got married yeah. with her. I knew her before when I used to go around, uh, my family had a butcher's round and we used to go around Belton. I'd seen her then, but I didn't really know her. Yeah. Uh, another thing I, I recall of being told, that I think up there, there was, there was a house where they used to put all the bikes in or something. People used to well, cycle in and they took for safety. Uh, well, we were a butcher's shop in the market, in the high street opposite the chapel, and everybody used to bring the bikes there because we had an open shed. And everybody used to, well, a lot of people on a Saturday night used to come to the cinema and uh, park the bikes in the shed, and we had a big shed, it was full of bikes. I think not. If we borrow a bike, we'd rather borrow a bike and have a ride on it and come back before the cinema finished. Yeah, yeah. So that, they did put them up there as well, we think, didn't they? Uh, I think it was a house with a, with a tunnel, you know, that you could just stick them inside. Yes, it was just opposite there, yes, there was a house with a tunnel where Mr Remington lived. Oh, and exactly. They really? the bikes then, yeah. Now then, OK, 1978, June, yeah. the fire. Did that shock you? Well, it did really, but I had nothing to do with the cinema then, because no. I was working full-time at Kidby. All oh, right. And, uh, you know, I was working... Uh, at the Kidby Power Station quite a few years uh, and I ran the cinema as well it was showing films with other people of course they were getting the films ready and I was here during the night yeah. oh, okay. when I was in the forces I used to come I was only 18 then and when projectionists there used to go on holiday I used to come down for a week and show the films in here Yeah. yeah. so when it happened I mean for, for Epworth it must have been devastating well, I think it was, but a lot of people stopped going to the cinema then, of course, because television had come, and uh, they weren't bothered about the cinema. Uh, but just think if it was here now, what a facility it would be. Oh, it was, Considering yeah. Epworth has got nearly every other facility, swimming pools and yeah, leisure yeah. centres, if it only had the Rio cinema. Yeah. Would you think that would be good here today? I don't think people would go. No, not, no. Seven, not six no. days a week. No, no. another era. It is, completely. I mean, when it was built, they had all the latest projectors and everything in here. It was a lovely place. And uh, then when the robe came out in the 60s, all the equipment came out and you were put in for, uh, you know, the new technology yeah, world. Yeah. Yeah. So when it, when it, I mean, you know, I, I take it you come up and saw the wreck, did you, that we've got a picture of? Oh, yes. When it, when it had finished, I mean, I got a lot of bricks and uh, I did a lot of concrete at home and uh, what were they got, bricks? yeah yeah I got all the bricks underneath my uh, what was Sydney did Sydney York oh, it? 
Oh, yeah, well, I mean, it was just where he wanted to go. Oh, Nobody so wanted it, yeah. No, so you got some at home? Yeah, yeah. So Underneath the concrete, they're, <laughs> they're all chopped up. Yeah. Well, what a wonderful story. Yeah. So, so you thoroughly enjoyed your time as a protectionist there? Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. You met yeah. your wife. Yeah. yeah. You got married. We married yeah. him the same. Oh, yeah. wonderful story. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how about that then? Fancy of a projectionist marrying his wife, or finding, his, meeting his wife, going in the cinema, and eventually getting married. Yeah. Eric, it's been a pleasure having yeah, you. Thank you, very thank much. you for, for being on You're our welcome. film, the Jubilee. Yeah, the big you. Jubilee coming up. Yeah. And, uh, I wonder what, the, yeah. what, what they'd have thought of it now, you know, all those people. Oh, I don't that know. You were here yeah. on the yeah. Jubilee day. Yeah. So, anyway, thank you, Eric. Okay, then. Thank you very much. Thank you.